going on, Jerome? It's beautiful Tuesday. It's time for some Q&A, and periodically we'll toss out on the community tab a call out for questions. Thank you, everyone, who tossed a couple in. Uh, let's get going. Uh, first up is Tim Lindsay uh, with the McVeigh Rams game rapidly approaching. I've been thinking about all the great coaches, past and present, that get to and win Super Bowls and consistently put up great teams. Kevin O'Connell is just three years in now, and it's exciting to see he's on the way to that level, in my opinion, which is fair. I mean, obviously the start for the season for the Vikings, as well as uh, the 13-4 the wanting some more win the division in 2022, you can call it a fluke. You can call it whatever you want. Hey, but uh, uh, I seem to remember that the Lions won a one-score game, so that is a resounding ass-whooping. But the Vikings winning one-score games, ah. Eh. Uh, also, the Vikings would have won the division last year if Kurt Cousins didn't shred his Achilles. Not saying. Just saying. Uh, he's taken a lot of heat already, uh, but the guy is just three years in. We're truly blessed to have him, and our future is looking bright. Now, here's the thing, too, uh, about O'Connell, where he's a very good head coach. He, there's some things for him to work on, but the, the reason why he still gets criticism is because the expectations for him are that high, and that's what you want. Uh, Kevin O'Connell is not here just to go 10-7, and seven, maybe win the division, maybe push for the wild card, uh, and usually go one and done. Well, it's kind of ha what's happened so far, but like he, he is a, a coach that you can see winning Super Bowls with. And, and Quasey has assembled a fantastic roster. Flores is a, a tier one defensive coordinator slash head coach of the defense. And all the pieces are here. And you may say it's nitpicking, whatever, but uh, I mean, this team is capable uh, of winning a Super Bowl. And I, I love that. Absolutely love and adore that. So uh, even though Harbaugh would have been kind of fun. A couple years ago, Kevin O'Connell was obviously the right choice. Uh, speaking of Quasey, Sean Johnson, uh, what moves... Now, I know this is probably a dude, but I'm holding out hope in the back of my mind. This is Sean Johnson, the gymnast from back in the day. Huge crush on her when I was a kid. Uh, what movies would you like to see Quasi make before the uh, moves? A couple movies, too. I, I would love to see a, a Red Dawn remake that's actually good. Anyway, uh, what moves deadline? What do you think would be a mo re most realistic moves for him? So, uh, obviously, the, the pie in the sky, Quinn and Williams... Dexter Lawrence, J.C. Horn type moves are there, but I, I could see some sort of mid-level moves. You know, Vikings bringing some situational defensive line pass rush help. Vikings uh, picking up some cornerback help. I think that I would, I would love if the Vikings went all in on Mike Hilton of uh, the Bengals. I, 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 Mike Hilton's been one of my favorite corners in the league, just because he brings what like he plays like Antoine Winfield Senior adjacent, and he would be a ton of fun, man. But uh, I. I think this trade deadline is probably going to be more like 2023. You know, the Vikings made the trade for Cam Akers as well as uh, Josh Dobbs. Uh, were, I mean, that, that kind of worked out. Versus 2022 uh, when they picked up Hawkinson. I, I, will, I would love if something blockbuster happened, but we'll, we'll see. All right, it takes two to tango. Uh, also, uh, Wesley White. What can this offense look like with J.J. McCarthy? So... I think that Sam Darnold is playing great, by the way. And also, I think that Darnold has, to a degree, spoiled us Vikings fans because he he's literally playing like a top-10 quarterback, and he's not 10. And just think about that. Think of the narratives from this offseason. Oh, Sam Darnold's a bust, but he's legitimately playing like a top-10, top-8 quarterback. And, I mean, first month of the season, he was playing like a top-5, and he, he, it wasn't 5, but regardless. But with, with McCarthy... So everything that Darnold can do, McCarthy can also do. McCarthy also has a stronger arm. Also, uh, he does need to work on throwing with anticipation. Uh, that's uh, a spot where he's a little bit behind uh, Sam Darnold. But, of course, Sam Darnold's a veteran, right? So McCarthy needs to know when he when to throw the changeup as opposed to the fastball or the slider, right? Uh, but McCarthy does have a stronger arm. McCarthy does have better mobility than Darnold, although Darnold was boot scooting boogie a little bit on Sunday. Uh, and McCarthy, he's got a much more fiery demeanor than Darnold. Like, Darnold is California cool, laid back, sort of Joe Montana. Uh, McCarthy gets fired up like Michigan man Tom Brady, although Brady's from California too. But uh, I think that everything that you see this year, all the good parts with Darnold in this offense, McCarthy can do that and more. All right, so that's why the future is bright. Also, Tony Jacobson. Uh, Andy, you were the saint to positivity. Thank you. Uh, don't say saints. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, Dan Campbell is on the Saints coaching staff. I'm not saying, just saying. Uh, you make this roller coaster of a season way more bearable and entertaining. Thank you for all of your hard work over the years. I really want the Vikings to go and defeat the rest of the season. But if they drop one or two games, which games would you think uh, they're okay to drop and not really worry about the team? Um, well, it, just in terms of record and tiebreaker wise, the the uh, out of conference games would be the ones to lose. All right, but uh, realistically. I think that the the second Packers game is going to be tough. Uh, if the 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 Vikings have something to play for, Week 18 uh, at Detroit is going to be a, another heavyweight match. It's going to be great. Uh, the Cardinals, uh, I, I've been riding or dying with the Cardinals all all season, man. I feel like that they have a spark. I, I think that things are starting to come together. The Falcons could be tough. Uh, the Seahawks uh, have bounced back, but other than that, like every single game is tough. Like the Vikings could easily win every game. They could also lose uh, every single game for a myriad of reasons, right? So uh, the, the cliche of trying to go one and zero and just taking care of your business week to week, I mean, that, that does hold true, right? And, and you can't – I know that a lot of people have said, well, here comes the easy part of the schedule. There's no such thing. There's literally no such thing in the National Football League. So every single game, do not take your opponent lightly. The opponent gets a vote too. So – Try to go one and zero against the Rams. Uh, next, Curly, how well do you expect Dalton Riser to line up at right guard for the first time in his career? So, Reisner has played only left guard throughout his career. You know, four years with the Broncos, one year with the Vikings, and I, I think that he will do fine. Uh, but we've seen before that flopping sides sometimes it doesn't work out. Brandon Fusco uh, is uh, is a name that you'll remember from uh, you know, God. About a decade ago, right? He, he was really good at one of the guard spots. He flipped him to the other side, and it just didn't work out. But Reisner, he did play three years of right tackle at Kansas State, so he does have a, a facsimile of that footwork down. And also, he, he played center his freshman year at Kansas State, which is kind of funny. Also, speaking of which, uh, I, I finished uh, Bill Snyder's uh, biography. It's a fantastic book. Like he, Bill Snyder is a, a true gentleman, true leader man, fantastic coach, and just raised the bar in terms of – the, the cal- caliber and character of players coming out of Kansas State. It's a really fantastic read. Uh, but with Reisner, there's a reason why uh, they hadn't worked so much at right guard in training camp before he got hurt because they, they knew that this was going to be the move. Plus, you, you got to give a lot of respect. I, I always respect like the, the, the veteran backups who have to be swing on both sides, whether it's a swing tackle like Cuisenberry, left tackle, right tackle, or a guy like Diamond Dan Feeney who has to back up all three interior spots because not only do they have to have the footwork down for left or right guard, but they also got to play center, right? So uh, it's not that big of an ask for a professional athlete. It's like, hey, you've been a left guard. You're going to be a right guard. You're, you're going to be good to go. And, and I know that there, there were uh, upsets, uh, unsubstantiated rumors that Reisner was pissed off. They had to play right guard. I don't think that he cares. Like as long as he gets on the field and can co- contribute to this team in a meaningful way, like he'll he'll play wherever he'll play fullback. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Actually, you know what? Ed Ingram is poor in pass protection, but how about a goal line fullback with CJ Ham behind him? Why not? Why the hell not, man? But uh, that is it. Q and A Q&A on this beautiful day, Bay Bay. You guys are the best. You know what to do. Skull production value.